everyone, we're here with Andrew Quillen today, and this will be the first series of uh, Better Call Art, and actually uh, Better Call Art is speaking about speaking with some of the uh, more tenured and talented reps that are affiliated with the Print for Pay Hotel. So Andrew, good to see you. Good to see you, Art. Good. How, uh, I was curious, uh, when did you start in the industry? Uh, 2007, April of 2007. So that gives you <clears throat> just about 14 years, huh? Yep, just celebrated 14. All right. And uh, I guess uh, I guess you're having a grand old time in the industry, right? Uh, at this point, I wouldn't want to do anything else. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I know you're based out of Eastern Shore, Maryland, correct? Yeah, my office is in Salisbury, Maryland. Okay, where's Salisbury? Um, so it's sort of in between the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Uh, we're about 40 minutes from Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, so we, we service an area, uh, my branch services an area of that's six counties uh, on the Eastern shore of Maryland and then one county in Delaware, Sussex County. All right, so you're 40 miles uh, west of Ocean City, Maryland? Yeah, right off right. of, uh, yeah, right off of 50. All right, and then, and then of course you've got that ridiculous Annapolis Bay Bridge, correct? Uh, yep, so we go to the bridge, but we don't go over it. Thank goodness, because I hate going over that bridge. I don't mind Chesapeake Bay Bridge, but I can't stand the Annapolis uh, Bay Bridge. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really care for either of them. Yeah, and there's one other bridge that takes you from Maryland to the northern neck of Virginia. It's called the Henry Nice Bridge. No, I hate it. Can't stand <laughs> it. But anyway, we're here to talk about copiers, not about uh, bridges. So down on the eastern shore, what uh, what lines do you, do you represent? Uh, Sharp, Cannon, and Xerox. Xerox for their entire line? Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. the entire line. Um, so we're part of their dealer program. Uh, right. We've been selling Xerox since uh, 2000 and 2017. All right. And how about Canon? Um, full line Canon production and? Uh... Yeah, we, we'll sell up to the image press, nothing bigger than that. Okay. And uh, wide format? Uh, yeah, we sell the image prograph. Um, we sell a bunch of those. And then really? we, we sell KIP as well. Um, okay. but, so, but we've got a specialist for wide format for the gotcha. whole company. Okay. So speaking about the, uh, the wide format, you've got KIP plus you've got the uh, Canons. I know Canon released a whole new, um, what, like uh, uh, they're, they were the OSA machines, but they're now branded uh canon oh laser products yeah or are you guys just doing the inkjet i think we're just doing the inkjet because we have the kit okay. all right sounds good so i get a better i just a better idea of what you guys know so down on the eastern shore do you guys selling any uh it services content or backup or just uh, basically hardware yeah we, we we dabble in it our our it team is in wilmington so um, they may do, they do more up there. Um, so we will do some project based things like, uh, you know, server and, and network upgrades. Um, but we're not really managing networks. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, with your efforts, are you mostly focused on, uh, uh, um, uh, SMB accounts, production, major accounts? Um, so uh, this is my second tour of duty as a sales manager in between, I was a major account rep. Um, okay. and, and so I'm, a, I would say a pretty active sales manager in accounts, right? I, I wouldn't call myself a selling sales manager. I don't have a quota for myself. Um, but I'm, I'm fairly active within accounts, uh, within my team. Okay. And as far as majors go, there's not an account that we are afraid to go in to try to get. Right. Um, 
and we do um, we have had some success um, in the last four or five years when, with production. Okay. And I may have to close my window with all that background noise. It's a nice uh, day here in Jersey, and I got the windows open. Um, um, we had a nice day, and then it, it started, uh, the sky opened up about an hour ago. Really? Uh, we had the same thing yesterday. Right. Like a couple inches of rain in a couple hours. Wow. Yeah, we had no rain yesterday, and we've got blue skies today. And I was able to catch the... Uh, um, the sunrise solar eclipse this morning, hmm. which is pretty cool when it was coming up over the ocean. Um, so curious, um, has it been for the last, well, COVID, has it been for the last 12 months? Uh, actually, really, really good. Good. Um, you know, really busy. Uh, we were only working from home uh exclusively just for eight weeks right and and then as soon as maryland opened up a little bit we went back that was the middle of may last year okay. uh, you know so we've worked from home some but but mostly we're here in the office and and now we're even i would say throughout last summer and the fall probably 65%, 70% of what we were doing was Zoom or Teams um, meetings with accounts, you know, clients or prospects. Now it's more like 90% are in person. Right. Um, so that's good. Um, but we really just, we've really been focusing on prospecting for a number of years um, and, and didn't stop, didn't, didn't, you know, slow up. Uh, when we, you know, were called called back home, right? Because so, uh, as we all know, once you stop prospecting, everything falls apart. Yeah, it can dry up pretty quickly. Absolutely. Um, so the last twelve months for you have been very good, right? Yep. Yeah. So we we were up. Uh, our branch uh, was up in 2020 over 2019. 2019 was a record year for us. Nice. Um, so we, we beat that last year. We're, we're on pace to whoop that this year. That's fantastic. Yeah. So we're, we're doing really well. All right. Now how about the last three months when things have tended to open up even a little bit more? I know Maryland's been ahead of New Jersey. New, yeah, for sure. New Jersey is probably one of the worst. Um, but the, I'm seeing the last three months in Jersey kind of kind of up and down a little bit. How's, how's, how's your neck at once? Yeah. So for us, the, the second quarter is always a down quarter. Um, we fourth and first are our top two quarters every year, right. year in, year out. Right. Um, and second tends to be a little low where um, we, we had a, we had a dismal April in for the branch, but it was really because we delivered everything in March, um, and we don't normally deliver everything that we sign. And we, I mean, we carried over almost nothing. Um, so we were literally doing deliveries every day for the last couple of weeks of March, which took away from the ability to prospect um, as much. So there was a dip, but it came back. It came roaring back. Um, you know, by the third week of April, it came roaring back, and uh, we had a we had a nice May, and we're having a great June, so. Okay, that's good. Things to look forward to, right? Yeah. Um, so, did you, uh, during COVID, for finding net new prospects, did you guys do anything different? I mean, well, I know you told me there was that eight weeks when you, were, you, were, uh, you, you weren't in the office, but I'm sure there was additional weeks after that when really knocking on doors just wouldn't cut it. Yeah, we were we were back in the office after eight weeks, but most of our prospects and customers were not. Right. Uh, or if they were, they weren't letting us in. Right. So, you know, before COVID, it was um, it was a lot of, you know, in person, door to door with the phone, um, you know, 
phone more than than in person and and it depended on the rep um you know so we've got some reps that just prefer face to face over everything right. um so having to switch to email um email or linkedin or some even even text messaging which we didn't didn't really do a whole lot of but you, we just wanted to be able to reach people yep um so we had more success with email than than we did before covid um but i think that's just because that's what people were using to communicate even within their own organizations um you know we had a we had a, a win uh few months back that was started right in the middle of, of the lockdown um, off of a, it was really just a cold email. Uh, it was a good email, but it was a, you know, it was an unex, they were not expecting to receive an email like this, but just basically sent this email to six people, I think, within the organization that were listed on the website. Right. Um, and basically, hey, you know, we want to help um and got in they they had some initiatives that they weren't thinking of us for and um you know so that ended up being a, a pretty good takedown uh that happened it ended up happening this year but it, it was started last year right right in the middle of you know everyone's sitting in their bedroom or you know home office or kitchen table whatever it was you know if you think about it that's uh really for some people i mean besides I mean, besides watching TV or, I, I mean, maybe reading a book or uh, the email was the next best thing, especially uh, to com communicate uh, uh, whether it was work-wise or whether it was vendor-wise. You know, that email came in and you were able to jump on it right away. Yeah. I, I, and I think, you know, no one was, no one had any idea how long the lockdown would last. They it came out and said it would be at least until this, but we could, we could extend it or, or, you know, if, if this just blows right over, we could come back earlier, but, you know, we, we had a pretty good idea that we were going to be at home for a couple months. And, yeah. um, you know, as salespeople, you, if you're not selling, what do we need you for? And so, uh, I think everyone wanted to prove their worth and, and so, you know, activity levels, which I personally don't track uh, aggressively. Um, I'm not like, oh, you didn't make your 35 calls today. Um, you know, we're looking at them, but not, you know, busting stones on a daily basis. Right. But, you know, had to, had to take had to take a harder look at them to just to make sure because now everyone's at home and you know make sure that they're not just sitting around watching netflix or whatever but right. uh, well you I can think, only watch so much of netflix yeah i think for the most part everyone really really worked hard to to prove that they should stick around because you know we did have to furlough some um some admin and some uh technicians because calls were way down and right but we didn't we didn't furlough any anyone on the sales team that's good. So, so now that we're in a post COVID, right? Um, are you guys back to what you did pre COVID knocking on doors, phone calls? I mean, are you guys trying anything, you know, new into the mix? Um, yeah, I've got one rep. Uh, we're still, so to answer the first part of the question, we're, we're, we're almost back to post the pre COVID from a, prospecting style um okay. uh things in 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 the eastern shore and and sussex county pretty much have opened up and but uh, still not like knocking on doors like we used to no nah, maybe not as aggressive but it's right. it's it's way more than it was last summer or right. even last fall okay um and i've got to, to the second quest, part of the question i've got i've got one rep that is um is doing the Dale Dupree letter campaign, right? Uh, and having some success with that. Um, he's on his second uh, style of letter now. Um, so uh, he's super excited about that. He's only been in the industry for eight months, and um, 
he's just out of college. So he's only been in, in the working field for eight months. Right. Uh, so, um, you know, I, my thought is that when the success continues, um, you know, some of the other reps who know, uh, you know, they've been presented with that uh, letter campaign might start to use it because, um, you know, as it, as it stands right now, he's number two on my team uh, for revenue. Good. So, Good. Uh, Well, you know, it, sometimes it comes down to, you know, whatever you believe in or whether you have faith in, if you believe it or if you have enough faith, you can make almost anything work, right? Yeah, and, and uh, you know. Sometimes get, all you need is that little idea. Right, and, and getting in the door is the hardest part of the job anyway. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I agree. I agree. So um, with your hardware, so with the hardware that you sell, is there any feature app or third party that you're uh, more or less recommending to most of your clients now? Meaning trying just to get away from, because we all know uh, basically all these boxes are the same. They basically will all copy, print, scan, and fax. But uh, sometimes the manufacturers have a little different solution and you try and use that as the differentiator between the other boxes? I mean, is there anything that, 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 that you guys are pushing out there for your clients that makes you different? Well, no, not really. Okay. Uh, I mean, we're, we, we're selling some paper cut. Um, All right. That, which a lot of, a lot of my competitors are selling. So it's not necessarily a, a, um, a differentiator, but if we can be the first one to bring it to their attention, that's the differentiation, I think. Right. Um, you know, selling some, some connectivity, uh, some cloud uh, connectivity um, with, you know, with Google or Dropbox. Um, but no, not a lot. We're, we're, we're. Okay. We're moving, we're moving hardware. Okay. So um, speaking of hardware, how are you guys been receiving hardware? Uh, hardware has not been an issue for us. Okay. Um, I, I know some of the manufacturers are struggling. The wide format, um, we're, we're behind on that as far as that. the delays yeah. there. Um, you know, they're, they're longer than they used to be. Right. Um, but A3, A4, we're, we're, uh, we're not having any issues right now with, with getting hardware in. That's good. That's good. Good for you. Because there's a lot of other uh, uh, dealerships experiencing uh, some issues. Um, so another question um, with all of the concerns around cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. ransomware we've all read it we're all seeing it it seems like every day there's someone new or some new big name that's been attacked or or, or received the ransomware um are you guys initiating any talks with your clients about mfp security uh mfp security has been part of our um talk track for well over 10 years because you guys are sharp. Yeah. Sharp, so sharp you know, jumped on that quite, yeah. quite a long time ago. Right? Yeah. CBS report now, I think was 2009. Um, right. and, and we rode those coattails for a while. And then, um, you know, but pretty much everyone's got good uh, network security built into the machines now. Um, right. So are you, maybe I can rephrase that. Maybe are you guys, you know, for some of the older devices, you guys that you have in a field that are five plus years old, um, because those machines don't get updated with firmware and the oldest machines, they basically, the companies aren't making any updated firmware, uh, maybe uh, the talk track with that, those clients should be centered around, hey, this thing's too really, really too old to keep on your network. Yeah, um, I would say fortunately we don't have a lot of old equipment in the field, um, and and 
where we do um, it, they're not, they don't have in-house IT that, that would, that would have that concern. Um, but it's, a, I like the idea to, you know, go after those. We just upgraded a couple of machines yesterday, a nine year old and an 11 year old Canon. Um, but I know that wasn't part of the conversation. Okay. Interesting. Um, so now that of course we're in the post pandemic and um, what's your thought on new meetings? I mean, are you guys, are you guys gonna go back to pre-COVID and everything's gonna be in person? Or are, uh, because a lot of us realize that, especially me, how much time I gained in productivity by like today, I had to travel to an account. It was 90 minutes away. Yeah. 90 minute drive there. I was there for the customer with the customer for 45 minutes. I had to drive back to my home office from there, which was almost two hours. So I found three and a half hours just driving today. Yeah. And that, that, I mean, that, that's half a day. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, we're, we're definitely asking or offering um, the virtual meeting, uh, but I feel like both on the sales rep side and on the customer prospect side, um, people want to see you now, now that things have opened up. So I think we'll go, we'll continue in a hybrid type of a, uh, situation right right like a more like a more like a first meeting in person and then follow-up meetings via a lot of account virtual. reviews uh you know quarterly business reviews or even follow-up with non-customers um have the second and third meetings have been um remote okay um but yeah the first meeting the i feel like it could just be people want to see you um, you know, or just want to see someone else because they haven't seen anyone um, other than their family and, or their dog for, you know, a year. Um, but I, I would say for the last three or four months, um, it, that, that has gone, that's shifted way more back to in-person meetings. You know, right. we were doing 70% uh, Zoom or Teams meetings and then that's that's shifted, and I would say in the last month, ninety percent of the meetings we've had are in person. Right. Um, so I would I would think that it would shake out to a 75-25 split probably. But um, okay. I had a Zoom meeting yesterday afternoon, and same situation. It would have been an hour and fifteen minute drive for me. Um, for the meeting turned out to be twenty five minutes. Right. But because it was Zoom. It started on time. I didn't have to drive. And when it was over, I could jump right into something else. Right. Didn't have the wrong address. GPS didn't take you to the wrong place. Uh, like I saw today, there was a, a, a boat that fell off a trailer and a truck flipped over. Oh, yeah. Well, and the worst part, uh, you know, the in, in the olden days, you know, before March of last year, you could drive an hour and a half and someone get pulled into a meeting and not meet with you. I mean, that's happened to me a bunch of times, drive an hour, hour and a half to yeah. a meet, and then they can't meet with you even though it was scheduled. Yep. And now what, you know, now you got a cold call just to save your, you know, time, save your time. Yep. Um, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, th I'm thinking maybe that, uh, that uh, now that we've all had a taste of zoom and, uh, uh, to the MS team meetings um, that um, that 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 hybrid could uh, actually help quite a few of us. You know, anybody with a net new, I believe, if if I'm on net new, I want to be there. I, I mean, I I, I want to open up that door. I want I want to have eyes on 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 what's going on. Right. I want to see that office because a lot of times what you see you can predict um 
yeah how, how financially stable the the, the client is right uh, 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 what their thoughts are on technology I mean if you see technology all over the place and then you know you walk into a place and the desks are 30 years old there's paper all over the place uh, there's still a typewriter sitting on the table there's analog phones well chances are you're wasting your time right right yeah right. for sure so that that initial first meeting i i think we all need to say yeah hey you know what net new existing yeah we could do a virtual because i've been there you know me i know you but that initial first meeting with net new we got to keep those on site yeah and we had a lot of net new meetings with people that we'd never met before and via zoom or or teams right. um you know, and some of them we've had follow up uh, meetings with and, and conversations with. Um, but, you know, the other, you know, we've not been in there. So we don't know if there's, you know, two printers, you know, a black printer and a color printer that are right next to the copier. And, you know, you can't make those suggestions that you, if you don't know what's going on and you've got to be there to see what's going on. I believe so. I believe so. Um, so here's a unique question for you. If you were the king and you had the power to add one new feature to any one of your machines, what would you add? One new feature. Or what would you like to see? Um... I don't know. I, what's an, what's annoying to me is, um, you know, having to get up and walk to the machine. <laughs> okay. It, uh, you know, so a courier service uh, robot to bring me my my papers. Hey, y'all, that's unique, right? I know that that they've got the Alexa now for for hands free on some of the devices and yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much of a really a time saver that is. It's it's certainly uh, maybe helped with with some of the, you know. I don't know how much of a time saver it is either, because, you know, the amount of people that physically copy things anymore isn't what it used to be. Yeah. I mean, you know, people print and scan more. Now, if you can say, hey, scan this to... Uh, Bill, Tom, and uh, Catherine, that might be a plus. Or yeah. send this to uh, send this to my OneDrive location, my Dropbox, and uh, send it to my desktop. I mean, that could be beneficial if that could be done through Alexa. But I mean, Rico has introduced uh, that technology recently too. And I don't know, I just... Uh, I just, I don't, I, I don't have a gut feeling that it's going to be. It's a hard question to answer because, um, you know, there's not been a whole lot of groundbreaking technology in the last 10 years. Right. Uh, you know, once, once everything went digital and, and you could print and scan, um, you know, that, that, that was basically, that was basically it, I think, you know. I'll tell you the one thing that I would like to see. I would like to see a, uh, an app on the machines where I could take any paper-based document or picture or legacy document or maybe, you know, uh, uh, anything and I could put it down in the glass and I could scan it and post it to any social media platform, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook or whether it's LinkedIn. That would be cool without having to go back to your desk and take the picture, take the picture of it and then put it on each one, yeah. load it up to each site individually. So at the machine, I can push all three sites. My username and passwords would be programmed in. And then I could put my subject line in and press upload and there it is yeah that would be neat neat for uh, uh marketing 
know, especially if you want to do something here and there, or I think it would be a neat feature for marketing departments, especially, you know, a lot of them have those throwback Thursdays or bring stuff up from 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, just a, that, that, that's what I would like to add. So do you, uh, I guess in the last 12 months, do you have any uh, uh, funny stories about, uh, a, you know, a sale or uh, something unique that was, uh, you got a chuckle out of? Um, well, I mean, we've had some success uh, stories that are, um, you know, I've, I've been playing the long game for a, for a while. Um, you know, when you first get in, you just, you, your nose is down and, and you're just trying to get everything you can. Um, and you're really not focused on the long game. Um, you're just trying to survive. Um, and, and so changing my, the way I sell to, to long game, I realized probably, may, probably my late twenties that, all right, this is the industry for me. And so if I'm going to work until I'm in my sixties, I've got 35 years left. Um, so that's, you know, if it's five year lease, I've got six or seven opportunities to win this account. Um, and that's how I looked at it, um, which took all the pressure off the buyer because I was not a, it was not a high pressure sale. Like yep. I'm going to do my best to try to win, but if I don't, I'm going to be back in four years. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and so we've had, we've had uh, quite a few, um, opportunities that we've won in the last 12 months that, you know, were started 10 years ago, uh, started by me. Nice. 10 years ago, um, you know, one in particular, uh, last month, um, guy messaged me on LinkedIn. Hey, and, and he owned his machine. So it's a harder type of a, um, opportunity to track, but you know, I, I bid on it five years earlier. I bid on it five years before that, which, which was a lease the first time and yeah. didn't win either one of them. Um, and reached out to me and um, he didn't even get a quote from his other vendor or he had one, but he didn't, it was, it was old and he didn't go back and get a, a second quote. Right. Uh, so we won that business, you know, 10 years after the first opportunity. Um, and, awesome. and we've been seeing a lot of that, um, you know, in, in the uh, traffic outside my office there. Um, been seeing a lot of that, you know, over the last three or four okay. years. Good. Yeah, you know, what comes around goes around, right? As, if you're in this for the long haul, as they say, uh, you know, like uh, me, I've been in this for the long haul. And it's kind of like uh, baseball, as long as you hang around long enough and you put up the numbers, you're going to get yourself to the Hall of Fame, baby. Yeah, three out of 10 for the whole career for 20 years, you're in. Yeah, try 40 years. <laughs> right. Hey, so uh, we're coming close to the end. Zoom, a uh, free Zoom only gives me 40 minutes. Minutes, yeah. Uh, um, so if you could, uh, last question. Um, what's the one piece of knowledge that you'd like to share with new reps that are getting in or been doing this for six months, 12 months? Uh, net new business is everything. Cool. Um, I mean, not to take away from managing accounts and, and taking care of your customers, but if you want to have a career in the copier industry uh, and you can, and you could put up, you know, uh, let's just throw out a number 300,000 in new business every year, it's compound interest. The what, because we're, you know, leasing is a huge part of the industry yeah. and if you're if if net, if you're doing a couple two to three hundred thousand in new business every year, then you can increase your income thirty five percent every three years. Yeah, what comes around goes around. And that's my piece of advice to new reps walking in the door is long game, and it's compound interest if you if you can stick with it if you're you know good enough to make it and and can stick with it net new business, not just your first three years, but your Every year, every year, every year, yeah, um, and and that's that's why we've had the growth uh, that we've had through COVID and beyond. I think is is because we've we've kept that kept that mentality. Great, great. 
That's awesome. All right, we're going to uh, call this a wrap. I really appreciate the uh, time. And uh, since I'm uh, a hop, skip, and a jump away from the uh, Eastern Shore, if I get down to uh, Chris Field, I should uh, give you a buzz. Absolutely. All right, buddy. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you. Uh, I'll talk to you uh, offline maybe tomorrow or something. All right. Thanks, Art. All right. Take care. Thank you. All right. Bye bye.